friends, welcome to Farm to School with the Big Garden. My name is Miss Kay and today I'm going to talk to you about seeds. We're going to talk about how to save seeds so we have more to plant next year. So I'll show you where to find them, how to gather them, how they disperse, and then how to store them for the winter. Why do we save seeds? We save seeds so that we have more to plant later. So I like to collect some for myself, but it's also a good idea to collect some to share with friends. And the best time to collect seed is in the fall when the plants are getting ready for winter. So where do seeds come from? Seeds come from plants. So when you plant a seed in the ground, it will grow and work all summer to produce seeds so that the plant can continue to grow year after year. So I'm standing in front of a garden full of corn, sunflowers, and beans, and all of these plants are working to produce seed. So for example, got our sunflower right here, and when all of the really pretty yellow and orange petals are on the sunflower, it won't be ready yet. You gotta wait to get the seeds until all of the petals have either turned brown or fallen off, and the rest is just kind of turned brown. And then you can go in and you can kind of already see the seeds here. You can kind of just scrape them out, and you got some sunflower seeds. You can save those for next year. And I like to save a few for me and gather a few for friends so I can share them. But I also like to leave a lot on the sunflowers for birds and other critters to eat over the winter. Over here we have some beans growing and we've got some green beans over here that are nice and fresh. But these might be tasty to eat, but they're not ready to harvest the seed from yet. If you pick that, you can kind of feel some seeds inside but they'll still be squishy and they won't be ready. If you save those and planted them, you won't get a new bean plant. Um, but this is a good example right here of a dried bean. And we got a couple more over here I'm gonna pick. So these are all brown and crunchy and dry. So if we crack these open, we will see nice beans that are all ready to be saved until next year. I have a couple other examples here of some vegetables, herbs, and flowers, and seeds that you can save. So this one over here is a really beautiful flower, and it's an herb called anise hyssop. So this is what it looks like fresh. I just picked this, um, and pollinators love this one. You can also use the leaves in a tea, and it tastes like black licorice. But that's the fresh version, and you want to wait just like with the sunflower and the bean for it to get all brown over here. And then something really fun about this seed to save it is you can just get like a piece of paper or a plate like I'm using and you can just tap it out and the seeds will come right on out onto the plate. So they're really tiny, but you might be able to see that. All right. And then this is a flower called Echinacea and this is a prairie plant. That's another one that's great for pollinators. Um, and this is what it looks like when it has gone to seed or has formed seeds. So you can kind of see over here on this one, all these beautiful pink petals have turned all brown and dry and crispy. And then the pretty orange center has turned into brown as well. And this one is really pokey. So I kind of like to do the same thing that I do with the anise hyssop and just kind of tap it out. And you can see the seeds coming out right here. You can also put like some gloves on if you have them and kind of scrape them off and they'll fly everywhere. It's kind of fun. All right, moving on, we have an herb here and this is basil. So usually we use the leaves of basil in like pizzas or a tomato sauce. It's really delicious. I also just like to put it on sandwiches. Um, but another comparison, so this is what it will look like when it's still flowering. It sends off the stalk. You can see tiny little white flowers on there. Sometimes they're purple. It depends on what basil you have. And this is what they look like when they're all dried out. So this one's kind of fun. You can kind of just take your fingers and smush them all off and crumple all of it up. And then you'll see tiny little seeds in here. You can pick them out or you can just put the whole thing into an envelope to save for later. All right, and this one's kind of fun. This is peppers. So when you open a pepper or you take a bite out of one, it's really easy. You see the seeds right in there, but they're not quite ready yet. They've got to stay in the pepper for a little longer. So you pick them when they're nice and fresh and just like you're going to eat them. But instead of eating them, you'll just set them out on a dry, cool place and let them get all crispy. They stay red, you can kind of tell, but the tops aren't green anymore. And make sure if you have a spicy pepper, you wear gloves when you do this part. 
So you can kind of tear it open or use scissors when you have to. You can see all those seeds coming out. Peppers have tons of seeds. It's fun to save that one. All right. And then I have another fun bean to show you. Um, it's different than the one that was in the garden outside, but this is called an orca bean. So you can actually see on this one, it has kind of a seam and it already split open. So that's one way that seeds can kind of disperse themselves. They just kind of split open from their bean pod and the beans fall right out. So this one's really cool. This is one of my favorites. It's called an orca bean. It is black and white, just like an orca whale, and they're really beautiful. It's fun to save these too. All right, so those are some more vegetables and herbs and flower seeds that you can save. And next I want to talk about how seeds travel. So I kind of already talked about how beans and some peas just kind of split open and the seeds fall out. Um, over here I have a really cool one. This is from a milkweed plant. I think this is common milkweed, but there's lots of different kinds. So you can kind of see it. It's a lot of fluff. Um, so this is actually three little pods all together. And one has been just opened and the seeds aren't quite falling out. And then one is a little bit more and then this one's definitely falling out all over the place. So each individual seed has a tuft of fluff on the end. And that's how it catches in the wind and it just blows away. And then a plant will grow there wherever it lands. All right, so that's the seed dispersal through the wind or through the air. Another cool one I have over here has these little tiny seeds all over it. And if you brush up against it, if you're hiking or outside just on a walk, they'll stick to your shirt and your clothes and then you become a seed disperser. Uh, wherever these fall off, if you end up seeing it and picking them all off, wherever they land, they will disperse and a new plant will grow. So those are a couple different ways that seeds disperse, but my favorite way is just to collect them myself and disperse them myself. So all of these seeds here, you can collect them. I usually like to put them, um, each individual variety, into an envelope like this, or you can just wrap them up into a piece of paper, whatever you have around. Make sure you label what variety it is. It's also good to put the date on there so you know how old your seeds are. And then store them on a clean, dry bookshelf or somewhere safe that you know you can use them next year. So today you learned how to save seeds from vegetables, flowers, and herbs. So I hope next time you're outside, you look for some seeds that you can save, collect a few for yourself, and share some with some friends. Thanks from the big garden. We'll see you next time.